five minutes. 15 day old, code blue, room one. This is the worst kind of announcement we can hear in our ER. This makes your blood run cold, makes you get yourself prepared, ready. You never know what's gonna come in the doors. So we set up, we start preparing, we prepare for the worst, and then they're here. So we look in and in rolls the paramedics carrying this little baby. And luckily they're just helping him breathe. They're not doing compressions, which is just the best news. You know that a code blue generally means that somewhere someone has stopped breathing. Hopefully it's just that they've stopped breathing and that their heart is still beating. So on this day, they come in and they're holding uh, just positive pressure. So they're bagging this little baby and they're saying, uh, we're, we're listening, we're all, we're working like a well-oiled machine. We do this regularly, we know what to do and we're working. Um, this room, room one, every hospital has one. Every ER knows what it means. It's the room, it's the room where um, you win some and you lose some. It's the room where many prayers are said, prayers of hope or prayers of desperation, sometimes prayers of joy and great thanksgiving, and sometimes prayer of suffering and, and really hard days. Um, this day was a good day. We were able to stabilize. We, uh, we were able to do a lot of hard work. Um, and uh, there's, there's tiny IVs going in, there's medications being given, there's everyone working, doing their role, knowing what they're supposed to be doing, and stabilizing this patient for the ICU. Um, that's our job, is to stabilize. So uh, we take this baby up to the ICU team for them to continue to do care. Um, and we get in the elevator to come back down and we high five each other, job well done. Um, and we just take a deep breath, the calm, before we walk back into the ER. You see, the ER doors don't close for the last hour while you've been doing stabilizing care. They're still open and there's a kid in room four and he's down there with his broken arm and there's a kid in room eight and he's got strep throat and he's wondering where the doctor's been for the last hour. And there's a kid that's maybe riding on the helicopter from Fayetteville because he was in a wreck. Um, so we're back to the bustle, but that's why we do it. That's why most of us have chosen to work in the ER. We've chosen to work in the ER because we like the action. We like the, the continual busy. Um, we've got 36 rooms and most of the time they're full. And some in the waiting rooms. Um, we see on average like 200 kids a day. So. Um, we, we love the crazy and we, we uh, go from, from room to room and uh, try to, you know, just help the kids feel better. Um, like Andrew said, like a lot of people want to know what's the worst thing you've ever seen, or at least they ask the nonchalant question. And um, most of the time I don't, I don't give an honest answer to that question because it's very hard to like explain the, the abuse and the neglect and the things that we sometimes see in the ER, um, and especially since they're, they're little tiny humans, they're someone's kid or their, their grandkid or their sister or brother. But what we do like to talk about are the victories, the, the miracles, and that's what you should ask us about, because we've seen them, we've seen a lot of them. I mean, I've seen, um, I've gotten to do literal chest compressions on someone and seen them walk down the hall at a later date and they're alive and well and walking around the earth because of the care that we provided to them. Um, it's not every day is full of action. Most people think that it is. It's like you've seen a TV show and you know what the ER is like. Um, but most of the day it really is the, the cuts and the broken arms um, and most days are pretty average. Um, just this week I had a little dehydrated three-year-old that came in and his parents knew he wasn't feeling well and he wasn't acting right because he hadn't jumped off any furniture today or, you know, broken anything in the house and they just, he just isn't quite right. Um, and with just like a little fluid and some medication, um, that kid was pulling his leads off and playing with a toy and running around the room acting like himself again. Um, that's what it's all about, um, making the children feel better and helping them to, um, you know, their parents to feel comfortable taking care of them at home. Um, a couple months ago, one of my favorite stories is uh, we had this um, girl who has 
a few developmental delays and she came in and she got back all the way back into a room and she freaked out. She got very nervous about the procedure that was going to be done and so she ran out of the room and she was very hard to console and to, to get back and her mom was like, she loves to sing. And so uh, all of a sudden, like a couple of nurses started singing and they were uh, singing to her in the hallway, sat down with her on the floor and they were singing uh, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, a whole bunch of nurses and this one little girl in the middle of the hallway on the grimy floor. Um, all the while someone snuck in and did the procedure real quick and her mom was just in tears crying because we had just calmed her enough to, to get her out there and she was happy and clapping and dancing. Um, and this is why I chose Peds. Kids are so fun. They're resilient. They're, they're hilarious. They say the goofiest things. Um, they, they go from looking so sick to getting so much better very quickly, much faster than adults. They're much cuter than adults most of the time. Um, and even though I don't consider myself in the ministry, um, I, I get the opportunity to pray with families before their children are rolled off into surgery or uh, to love and encourage a teammate who may not be a believer, or um, I get to be a part of the work of healing physical bodies, um, and that's pretty cool. My, my ministry is to the children of Arkansas and their parents, and I get to be the hands and feet of Jesus in that way. Um, and some people are gifted in teaching first graders. That's just not me, but I'm grateful for people who are teachers. Um, being a, nur a nurse in a tough place has really strengthened my uh, faith a lot. I, I don't know how people could do and see some of the things that we see and do uh, without knowing that God is in control of the good days and the bad days. Um, you would think that a lot of my lessons might consist of more book knowledge and learning something new, um, but the real lessons are deeper, much deeper. We, I learned to love more fully, and I've learned to uh, work with a team and to really communicate well. Um, I've learned to help people in their time of need and what a joy and an honor that is. And I hope whatever each of you guys decide to do or pursue, I, pers I just pray that you pursue it with your whole heart and um, that you're a better person because of it.